I want to give you guys an autobiography so we can catch up. I know a lot of you guys haven't seen me in a while, unless you follow me on other platforms, because I have been posting on other platforms for several years. I just haven't been on YouTube. But like I said in a previous video, I'm, I'm done overthinking content. I just want to post. And I recently just subscribed to this guy who posted like a 45 minute video just talking to the camera. And most of the time, that's, that's the type of content I want to do. Sometimes I just want to talk. And I'm not very good at articulating my thoughts. So sometimes I'll just keep it to myself. Especially on Twitter, because Twitter used to be my favorite app, but Elon Musk has ruined it. I used to have Tweetbot, which was a third party Twitter app that had no ads. It didn't have half of the features that the real Twitter app did, and I loved it. I wasn't distracted by any ads on my feed. Um, I didn't get notifications from people that liked a tweet that I also, it was, it was just freeing. So when Elon Musk bought Twitter, all that, he can't, he deleted all that shit. Couldn't use no third party apps anymore. So now my whole Twitter feed is just ad after ad after ad, a for you page full of like propaganda and politics. And that's what I tried to avoid <laughs> my entire time using Tweetbot, but now I can't avoid it at all. So that was just a little side rant. But anyway, <clears throat> I've, I just want to, <clears throat> I just want to tell y'all what I've been up to since Vine died. If you have not kept up with my life at all. So I don't know how long this will be, but hopefully you guys stay till the end just so you guys can connect with me more. Because if you're still here on my YouTube channel, then I feel I feel like you care a little bit. That's all I want, you to care a little bit if you're watching this still. Uh, so I graduated in August of 2016. I had a girlfriend at the time and I was living in her apartment um, up until the days that my parents were gonna come down and take me back home. So. Um, first and foremost, I never moved out to LA during Vine. I never wanted to pursue, um, an acting career or any of that. My mindset back then was I'm going to get my degree. So my parents can check that off their completion box. And I want to have a good time with my buddies while I'm in college. In hindsight, do I regret that move? No, I had probably one of the most unique college experiences ever. I don't know. Probably it's probably more common now, but maybe not because people that get famous on social media now probably don't even go to college. I got Vine famous while I was enrolled. So maybe that is unique to me. I don't know. Maybe this will hit somebody that's famous now, that's enrolled in college and can give me some insight. But I don't know, everything changed after COVID. So this was 2016, 2013, all those years. But I got my degree, I moved back home with my parents to Daytona Beach. My college was in Boca Raton. I moved three hours north back home, stayed in Florida. Um, didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew I was gonna keep creating content, whatever that was, didn't know, just was just was gonna do it. I had a ton of debt. Obviously I had student loan debt, but I didn't have to pay that for six months. I had a ton of credit card debt. Um, didn't have any car loans because I never bought a car when I lived down there. Always just rode with friends, had friends who drove, so. Um, didn't have to worry about that. Still don't have a car loan in my name to this day. So 2017, I'm living at home. Um, there's some vlogs on my page of this time in my life. I think a hurricane hit, Hurricane Matthew. Some trees were down and stuff. 
I'm just creating content at home. Um, my buddy Andrew reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to start a podcast? And I'm pretty sure he messaged me about this in 2016. But we didn't start it until May of 2017, which is when the Spurs were in the Western Conference Finals with the Warriors and Zaza Pachulia ruined Ka Kawhi's career for a little bit. Then he went on to win the finals with the Raptors or whatever. So that happened. And I started this sports podcast in 2017 with my buddy Andy, who lived in Tampa at the time, which is on the west coast of Florida. So we're doing this podcast remotely. Um, we're, it's going good, I guess. You know, we were doing uh, our episodes on SoundCloud and stuff. Um, you know, we were off and on, we were pretty inconsistent. We went on like a two month break. Um, we never really got our consistency down with that. And we never, we never did video. But let's fast forward. Cause I'm still living at home all these years, 2017, 2018, 2019, kind of just doing what I did in college, making content, doing brand deals, yada, 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 traveling, um, creating Jag sports content, all of that. Still no, still no like real idea of what the hell I'm doing. I'm just living my life. So 2020 comes, COVID hits. I'm still living at home, obviously. Um, my mom, she was a very sheltered mother. So as a kid, she didn't really let me go anywhere. And even as an adult living at her house, when COVID hit, it got even worse. She was like, you ain't going nowhere. You ain't gonna bring COVID in this house. Wear your mask everywhere. Get the vaccine, blah, blah, blah. Um, got the vaccine. I got the J&J, &J, whatever. Feel fine till I don't, you know, who knows, who cares? Um, but 2020 was actually very good for me. It was my first year ever hitting six figures in income because everything was at home. Everybody was doing, um, you know, at home brand deals. The internet was thriving at that period because everything was quote unquote locked down. So I skipped, I skipped a big part of my life in 2019. <laughs> um, because in, I met Fetty Wap in South Padre Island. I went to like a spring break thing there and saw Fetty Wap and I showed him my vine where I did the wild Fetty Wap. And in that video that my friend I was with took of me, I looked really unhealthy. I looked super overweight. I was on um, like a six day binge of rum and Cokes and Whataburger. Um, I wasn't unhappy at all. I was just, I wouldn't say I was an alcoholic, but I did drink a lot, but not in a negative way, just for fun. So I saw this video and I was like, yeah, I don't like how I look. So in 2019, I started working out, intermittent fasting, and I did this from May 2019 to November 2019, and I lost 20 pounds. I got super lean. I started at 280, and I got down to 257 pounds. So from that year, I've always enjoyed working out, and I've been on this workout grind again at 31 doing the same stuff. Now it's a little worse because I have a girlfriend and I like to eat. I like to treat us to food. I like us to try food together. And I have a hard time controlling my portions because I like it so much. So sometimes I'll just binge eat and order a bunch of food that I will know, I know I will finish. So that's another story. But yeah, I ended up breaking up with my previous girlfriend that I was living with when I graduated in like 2017 or something. Um, and let's fast forward back to COVID. COVID hits, I'm making six figures, uh, paid off a ton of debt because I lived at home. Um, I, like I said, I had credit card debt, student loan debt, um, but I only, I paid off the credit card debt. I had, this pains me to say, but thank God it's gone. I had 30, 30 to $32,000 in credit card debt. I had seven credit cards at the time. All of them were maxed out. And, you know, when you have that much debt and you start making a bunch of money 
and you know you have to pay it, sending a $4,000 credit card payment is very tough. But you know what you can do with $4,000 and you're sending it to a credit card company to pay down debt? That wasn't even all of it. This card was at 7,500 balance, maxed out. I'm sending $4,000 to, to knock it down. Um, but I just, I use credit cards to live my life. I, there was one point between 2016 and 2018 where I had a negative checking balance for the first time in my life after college. And I was on a trip with my dad in Tampa and I was like, Hey dad, I need money. I need some money. Like I, that was the first time I ever asked my parents for money. I always remember that because it has never happened again. <laughs> I had never had a, ne a negative checking balance again. I've never asked my parents for money again. So it was like 2017. I was like, dad, I need some money. I, I have like a negative 300 checking balance because you get withdrawal fees. And if you're not depositing any money, you just get, they just keep taking money out of a, of a, of a negative balance. And they eventually shut your account down after like a few weeks of inactivity. But yeah, I never got super rich on Vine. I know there were always jokes about Vine money, Vine money, Vine money. But yeah, there was money there. But I was never in the upper echelon of income earners for Viners. Um, like the other people that you know were. Um, I had some good brand deals, but they uh, they went to partying in South Florida and paying my rent three months in advance most of the time. But... Yeah, so part of part of um, getting in credit card debt, um, I don't know if you guys know, but Jordan Poyer, who is now on the uh, Miami Dolphins, former Buffalo Bills safety, I used my credit card to go on a destination wedding for him and his wife because I accidentally match make them match made them on Twitter. So he invited me to his wedding. So. I took me and my sister and my credit card was, it was at like $6,000 balance and my total available balance was like 7,500 and he invited me to his wedding. I was like, I'm not missing this wedding in Jamaica. So the all inclusive resort plus our flights from I forgot where we flew from, but we're flying to Jamaica. It took my credit card to like $300 less than my max balance. And I was okay with that. Had a great time. Um, would I do that now in my 30s? No, I would say, can't go. My card, I have credit card debt. <laughs> um, so lesson learned there. I guess I still take trips that I want to, but they're not that extreme. Like I'm not going to put a $1,200 hotel on a credit card if I can't afford it. But anyway, this is my credit card debt era and my beginning of my podcast era. So Jags, Jags make the playoffs 2017. It was a good time. Um, Watch the AFC championship game from home. Um, uh, but let me fast forward back to COVID. Um, COVID is when we started doing video because we had the big Zoom boom. Uh, we were doing it on Skype at first, but then we were like, hey, let's, uh, let's transition to this Zoom thing since everybody's using Zoom now. So 2020 is when we officially started our podcast YouTube channel and we were posting our podcasts and video format on Zoom. Um, and it was good. It was a good time. Kobe died that year, I think. Or was it 2021? Because um, we went on a little hiatus again. Like I said, we were never very consistent with the podcast. We liked doing it, but there were times where we were like, eh, I don't really want to do it right now. And we were remote. It was very tough to do it remote. Um, having to coordinate each other's schedules and our energy and stuff like that. And we battled a lot of Wi-Fi problems at my house. So sometimes the audio wasn't synced up in the early days, but that's besides the point. Um, 2021 comes. 
I'm now living at home for, what was it, four and a half years I've been at home now, post-college, 2021 comes. My buddy Andrew that I do the podcast with tells me that he's going back to Jacksonville for a job offer that he got. So he's leaving Tampa and going to Jacksonville for a job offer he got, and he needs a roommate. And I was like, oh, great, this will be great. I've been living at home for like four and a half years. We can go do the podcast together in the same spot. We can like build a studio out in our apartment and I can move there. So we do that. My mom was like upset about it, obviously, because her little baby boy was, um, which is funny, you know, like I'm kind of blessed to have parents that let me stay in the house that long, paying no rent and actually upset that I'm leaving the house after living there for four and a half years. I feel like most parents would be like, you bum, get out of my house. But my mom was like, I don't want you to leave and like asking me all these questions about if I'm going to make it and stuff. And I'm like, I'll be fine, mom. I lived in uh, South Florida for five years in college and graduated and made it down there. I think I'll be okay in Jacksonville, Florida with Andy. So we pack up. We move up to Jacksonville, Florida. We start doing our podcast in this apartment. Uh, we go to the NFL draft in Cleveland, start vlogging. Um, that was a very fun draft. Uh, we had a good time out there. And then I started dating long distance. And I would fly out to see my girlfriend pretty much every weekend or every other weekend, every chance I could get, I was flying out from Jacksonville to Columbus, Ohio to visit my girlfriend. Cause she was still in like a post college program, working on going into uh, med school and working on her MCAT and stuff like that. So um, we did long distance for a year and it was just me flying Columbus back and forth, back and forth. Um, I was still doing modeling too. So I'm signed with Wilhelmina, which is my modeling agency. It's like one of the top agencies in the world. And I was booking a lot with, with Wilhelmina before COVID, uh, 20, 20, actually 2019 was my best year. I was booked and busy that year. And even in 2021, when I was going back and forth to Ohio and Florida, I was still booking because I remember I would, I would go to like, I'd be in a hotel and I'd be doing podcasts out of the hotel room before I had a modeling gig the next day. So I was steady on the grind, y'all. I wasn't like just bumming around. I was trying to still like make a name for myself and, and make it in the modeling industry and podcasting and content creation with Jaguar football, all of that stuff. So I've always had my hand dipped in so many different buckets when it comes to just my brand. So that's why it's kind of like upsetting uh, that this year, 2024, I haven't booked one modeling gig at all. And I believe in the universe shifting in your life based on how you move and how I've been moving this year is really focusing on my fitness. And I really do not want to be unhealthy um, in this life. And I'm a big and tall model. So the standard for big and tall models, you have to have a 42 waist minimum. And I did at the time, but I just, I just can't accept to be a 42 waist just to meet a standard in a modeling industry. Because I haven't only booked big and tall modeling gigs. I've booked lifestyle vids. I booked slim fast commercials and None of the criteria for that stuff was a 42 waist. So it's like, if they really wanted me in this industry, then they would find work for me outside of big and tall. Cause boy, 42 waist is way behind us. But anyway, so I'm doing long distance. Um, and then tough conversations have to be had. Um, my podcast co-host bought a house six months into us moving into an apartment together. So I moved into his house with him, uh, took one of the bedrooms, uh, rent went down. So that was good, but we shared a bathroom and stuff like that. 
So that that was like, so we moved in together April 2021. He got the house November 2021. So my girlfriend's coming down to visit me for like games and holidays and stuff here and there. Um, but she eventually, I flew up to Ohio and we drove a U-Haul down with her dog, her friend, and we moved into our own place like six months after that. So I just was bouncing around constantly when I left my parents' house. It was like April, 2021, I move out of my parents' house in Daytona. November, 2021, we move out of that apartment, breaking the lease and moving into his house that he bought. And then May, 2022, like six months later, I'm in my own apartment now with my girlfriend. So we move in together and she's been living with me ever since then. We moved out of that place last year because we were just over it. We moved into a new apartment, 2023, and we just renewed the lease for that place for another year as well. But the thing with these new apartment complexes is like, you get into a new place that's like newly rebuilt after the first year, it just starts going downhill. But I, but our generation, I feel like is in a place where nobody can buy a house right now, unless you have substantial savings and you're having, you have like a really good job and you're saving up money and you're really nitpicky about your spending habits then you'll be all right. But a lot of my friends have been able to buy houses and I'm happy for them, but I've, like I've just told you the story. I've lived at home. I've been in credit card debt. I'm still trying to figure out what the fuck I'm doing. And I also don't really know if I know I have to make these decisions with my partner, but we just came back from a trip from Seattle, Washington. It was so beautiful out there. And my friend was driving my friend that I stayed with out there who lives there now, who moved from Florida to Seattle. He drove us around and showed us the all the places he knows out there and it was just it was just beautiful it was another world and I don't know I just I'm I don't really like Florida that much anymore I've been here my whole life and I've traveled so many places all over this country I wouldn't say out of the country that much I've only really been to I say only but there's <laughs> and, and if I put it into perspective the places I've been to out of this country a lot of people won't see in their lifetime. Like I've been to Vancouver, which was part of my Washington uh, trip when I went out there a couple weeks ago. I've been to the east side of Canada um, to snowboard in Montreal. I've been to Jamaica. I've been to Mexico like two or three times. I've been to Dubai, bro. Who's going to Dubai in their lifetime? Not many people. So the few places I have been to out of the country, I've been to, I've been to places. Um, I want to go to Japan next year, but I've been a lot of places in the U S too. And, um, I'm just, I'm not comfortable living in Florida the rest of my life. I don't feel like, but there's also, you have to take into account, you know, your parents, you know, my, my parents are getting up there in age. My mom isn't that healthy. Um, but I'm not going to get into those details. But, you know, these are just all the things that are on my mind constantly as I try to think about my present and while I'm thinking about the future. It's like, what's my future going to be while I'm thinking about the present and trying to, you know, make sure my bills are paid and I keep bringing in income and all this stuff. But um, when people do ask me, like if I'm just in a conversation with people and people ask me like what I'm up to now, I. I don't even know what to say anymore because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm surviving right now. Like most of us, like, I'm just trying to survive. I'm currently in somebody else's house watching their dogs right now. I took up dog walking in 2021 because I needed some income that would help me get out of this community more. Um, I started a nonprofit with my buddy, but that's been super hard because it's just two of us. And the third guy isn't local. He's in another city in Florida. 
and starting a nonprofit and doing that, it's a full-time thing. And trying to do that full-time while also trying to do five other things full-time that actually bring in income that help you pay for things is a very hard thing to do. So uh, po- I still do the podcast. We, we changed how we do it, though. We got bored with just showing up and talking about sports on the mic. So now we're going to try streaming video game streaming while talking about sports and see if that helps we just did our first episode last tuesday i think that's gonna i think that's gonna be like a good therapeutic thing for us um and i I work part-time for the jumbo shrimp here in town and i'm just gonna continue to uh, create fun engaging content and figure it out because that's what life is it's about figuring out and i am an entrepreneur and a self-employed individual. So that's all I can do is figure it out. But if you guys didn't know, that is where my last, what, let's see, eight years of life have been. It's been a whirlwind, but there have been ups, there have been downs as there will be in life for everybody. But I would say there have been more ups. There have definitely been more ups. Um, when the lows are low, they're low, but the highs will beat those out every time. And I look forward to a lot more highs and I hope everybody watching this can experience a lot more highs because there will be a lot of lows as well. And we all deserve the highs as well. So I appreciate you guys. If you're still listening to this, don't mind me. I am trying to get back into, um, being very comfortable and just posting whatever I want because we live in a social media time now where you are people just people just like to comment on everything just with their own opinion remember back in the day we used to be able to just say shit and it'd be funny now you say shit everybody want to like be a like try to correct you and everybody wants to be right about some shit you don't need to be right man I'm just trying to like be funny Say my thoughts, entertain. Like I don't need your opinion all the time. I would have, I would have DM'd you personally or asked in my post if I wanted it. You know, just in, just in some weird, weird times on social media now, and they're getting worse. We're getting worse, but that's all for now. You guys know where to find me. I'm not ghost. I never went ghost. Um, if you guys solely consume YouTube, then you probably are, you're like, damn, I haven't seen this dude in forever, but, um, I'm posting. I'm just not on the level I was back in 2016, not even 2016, shit, 2013, 2014. So as the people that watched me as kids back in those days grew up, then of course I'm going to fall into the into the abyss as my content isn't as massly produced. But you're always one Google search away. But obviously I know Eric Dunn is not on your mind as you're growing up and getting your own jobs and kids and relationships and stuff like that. So I'm 31 now. So I know a lot of the people that followed me back in the day were in um, high school, middle school. So we're all growing up together and The difference between me and a lot of creators out there is I don't have a kid audience and I don't really want a kid audience. And a lot of these creators have a kid audience and kids are the ones who are going to propel the creators up because the kids are the ones watching this shit. But I want adult content. I want real shit. I want these real life conversations because I'm more mature than what I used to post back in the day. And I'm not going to delete it because that's who I was. That's what got me to where I am today. But I want more mature conversations. I want more mature people in my life. And I don't want this political back and forth in my life. I don't want that on social. I don't want that in real life. And if you're saying just some stupid comments that have no thought or meaning behind them in regards to life or politics or anything like that, then I'm just not fucking with you. 
And I feel like as the years go on, my following list is going to diminish because I only I follow less than 170 people on Instagram now. That algorithm's fucked. Twitter, I'm clearing out everybody who's like just blasting propaganda on my feed. Like I don't need that in my life, man. I've done a good job of keeping all my shit positive. I understand there's negatives in life, but if I can control what I watch on my feed, that I'm going to do some excavation, baby. But that's all I have to say. I'm gonna get my day started here. I uh, hope y'all continue to um, live y'all lives intentionally as I plan to do. Peace. Oh wait, you say bye to the, bye to the dogs real quick. Where's the third dog? Say bye. Princess Blue and Snoop, say bye. Peace, y'all. Thanks for watching.